quick video here highlighting an interesting pattern you can build and achieve with the Azure DNS private resolver feature, which has gone GA recently. I'm going to take this opportunity to highlight that it works also with not just VMs, etc., but in this case, we've VNet injected a web app running on app service. So my web app here has got VNet integration turned on and it's been injected into this subnet here. Imagine this is some sort of disconnected spoke which I've given access to my application team, but it doesn't have connectivity back to my landing zone. But maybe there's some reason why I still want to provide them with centralized DNS resolution for some domain names. You know, maybe they've got a backdoor to on-prem, like a app service hybrid connection, and they don't want to manage their own DNS. No VNet peer in between the blue box and the purple box. On my Azure DNS private resolver, I've got an inbound endpoint and an outbound endpoint. Now, the inbound endpoint's got the IP address here, 1010.21.4. And my outbound endpoint's got the subnet 1010.22.0. In my rule set, I've got a VNet link configured only to this VNet over here. So that's the, the VNet, or we call it DNS forwarding VNet rule set link. It's not linked to my hub which means that whatever forwarding logic is defined inside of that rule set can be leveraged by VNets that are linked to it, that are specified to use Azure DNS. This spoke VNet here isn't specified to use custom DNS. It's just set up to use regular DNS, which we can see here, Azure provided DNS. Inside of the rule base on here, this is where we do something interesting. I've got a single rule in that rule set Remember that rule set's bound to my outbound endpoint, which says for anything going to qwerty.com, forward to the IP address 1010.21.4. Okay, so my web app makes a call to qwerty.com. It goes to Azure DNS. Azure DNS knows it's a linked rule set, so we'll apply the configuration inside of these rules. Now it knows I need to forward this request to 1010.21.4. Okay, so 1010.21.4 is an IP address that lives inside of the customer's VNet. Therefore, I will look at my attached outbound endpoints and send it out of one of those because there's no point Azure DNS trying to resolve that within its public records because ultimately this is a customer request, not a public request. So I will forward that request out of my outbound endpoint, the source from an IP in this range, destined for 1010.21.4. Where's that going to go? Well, in this case, it's going to my inbound endpoint of my private resolver. My private resolver will get that traffic and then forward it to Azure DNS for resolution. And what we'll see is inside of my Azure DNS private zone, which I've got configured for qwerty.com, I've got a test A record. A one, two, three, or four. And this Azure DNS private zone is linked, do this in a different color, in green, is linked to this VNet here. Okay, so if my inbound endpoints forwards to Azure DNS, because it's in this VNet, this Azure DNS private zone will kick in. The end result here should be that I can resolve domain names within the subdomain qwerty.com from my app service, despite it being completely detached from a layer three network IP connectivity point of view from my internal resolution centrally managed infrastructure. Here I've gone into my web app. I've opened up the Kudu console and gone to the debug console. From here, you can, you're logged into your back end of your app and you can run Commands. So I'm effectively on my app here. If I try and run commands against Azure DNS, it will come into the VNet and then go to Azure DNS. And the entire chain we talked about before will unravel. And let's look up against Azure DNS, a special 168 address. And we're going to go for test.qwerty.com. You see here we get back the IP address 1.2.3.4. And that's without this VNet being connected 
to my hub via VNet peering. So let's just play that back one more time. It can make your head turn around back to front when trying to wrap our hands around this for the first time. The first thing we showed that was that with a web app that's VNet integrated into this subnet, I can use my Azure DNS resolver service, but I can do it in this interesting way, which is I come into this spoke VNet and the spoke VNet will forward to Azure DNS. Azure DNS gets a hold of the request and because there's a rule set over here, which is linked to this VNet, Azure DNS will try and leverage the logic in this rule set. And it's matching my resolution request for QWERTY.com. And the rule set says forward to 10, 10, 21.4. Okay, at that point, the DNS request is forwarded sourced from the outbound endpoint to whichever IP address this is. And this IP address could go uh, to a DNS server on-prem or a DNS server wherever on the internet or elsewhere in your VNet. In our case, we're using a quirk here, which is destination can also be the inbound endpoint of the same resolver. So we're forwarding out of the outbound endpoint and back into the inbound endpoint. And traffic that comes into the inbound endpoint of the resolver doesn't get subject to these rules. It gets subject to resolution based on the resolver forwarding to Azure DNS. The request once again goes to Azure DNS. And Azure DNS knows that because this Azure DNS private zone is linked to the VNet within which my inbound endpoint resides, return the A record that's inside of this private DNS zone. This A record for 1.2.3.4, the test.qwerty.com, gets returned back to the resolver and the entire chain is unraveled and ultimately you can think about in the abstract sense, the request goes back this way. There's a couple of things you can think about there. One is obviously the, this is disconnected, but also imagine if you had many, many hundreds of VNets, you could scale this up to only have to connect your Azure DNS private zones, to your centralized hub VNet where your inbound endpoint is. And there are some scale considerations behind the scenes here, which we'll cover in the future. I just thought I'd highlight those two things in this video around app service integration and the disconnected forwarding using the loop in between the outbound and the inbound endpoint. And you can also do things um, such as forwarding to on-prem with this method as well. Anyway, maybe take the time to sort of replay this in your head. Even better, go ahead and set up a lab yourself and then it will really sink in. Thanks for listening. I will catch you in the next video.